What is up guys? Welcome back. If you guys are new here, I'm Kevin Crates. This is a crypto channel where we go over five charts every day. Always starting off with Bitcoin, Ethereum. Today we will be looking at Polkadot, Theta, and VeChain. And as always, we will be looking at the Ichimoku cloud for everything I just listed. Before we jump into anything, I just want to remind you all that timestamps are down below in the description. If you are just here for a specific chart or a specific news, feel free to jump ahead in the video as necessary. The market is looking a little bit better today, guys. However, there is still some pretty clear downward pressure. And the reason for that being, or at least part of the reason for that being, is regulations. This article came out today. Elizabeth Warren demands answers from the SEC on crypto regulations by the end of July. And we're seeing this more and more. Uh, this is an article from CNBC about Binance. Binance CEO says compliance is a journey as the world's largest crypto exchange faces growing crackdown. Regulations, in my opinion, are a bit of a double edged sword, right? Because they they add some validity to the crypto space as well as a bit of security. And both of those things are good in the long term for crypto. They will they'll bring in much more lucrative investors. They'll bring in much more money. They will they will remove some of the speculation involved in the crypto space. They'll make investing in things like Binance for large companies more feasible when there's less questions revolving around how will Binance function on a global scale? So for the time being, in the long term, it's obviously a great thing for the crypto space. However, in the short term, it's going to cause some downward pressure because less people are going to want to buy into something when there's a more of a question mark of how this is all going to play out. I just wanted to briefly touch on this. I don't want to spend too much time talking about this, but we will be keeping a very close eye on all regulatory news over the next few weeks because this will affect price action. And as we reach this date, July 28th, it will affect price action most likely negatively until there's a clear picture of how this is going to play out. In the long term, I obviously think this is this is great for crypto. It's great that anybody's even talking about it at this level, but for the short term, it's very important to keep in mind that this may have very negative implications for price action. The video playing behind me is called Polkadot, Are You Ready to Start Building? I've left the link down in the description below if any of you want to watch the full thing. It's only about a four minute long video, but we're just going to watch over this one part and then we're going to talk a little bit more about Polkadot. When it comes to upgrades, the process for updating conventional blockchains can cause a hard fork, a divergence in the chain that can take months of work and risk splitting a community in two. Polkadot is the first protocol to enable forkless, on-chain upgrades. This capability means teams can bring new features to their blockchain on Polkadot, easier and faster than with any other protocol. Polkadot also enables bridges to other networks like Bitcoin or Ethereum for cross-network functionality and communication. Never before has there been a protocol for connecting diverse blockchains together and allowing them to communicate safely with each other at scale in a decentralized way. So the features mentioned in that video are just some of the interesting architecture that is the Polkadot network. And if you're still a little bit confused as to what the difference is between Polkadot and Kusama, the most basic way to understand it is that Kusama is a test network for Polkadot. Uh, for Kusama, there are low barriers to entry, low bond requirements. It's more for early stage startup networks, whereas Polkadot is more high stability, high security, more conservative governance and upgrades and high validator rewards. With Kusama, applications don't require bank-like security, but with Polkadot, applications require bank-like security. The most basic way to understand it is that Kusama is a pre-production environment for Polkadot. In a future video, we're probably going to dive deep into the Polkadot network and talk about projects like Moonbeam, Kylin, and so many more that are going to be on the Polkadot network. But for the time being, I just want to focus on the Polkadot's parachain network because the parachain network is something that is important to keep in mind with Kusama and Polkadot bull or bear market because it gives the token a use case. So to make parachain crowd loans an easier thing to understand, just think about it as staking. Here's an example of the crowd loans in play during the first Kusama auction where Karura with 501,000 KSM tokens won the first slot auction. Now this is important to keep in mind because Polkadot and Kusama are tokens with a use case that have pretty large incentives for long-term locked staking. These are the kind of features with a token that in time could push price up and most likely would. 
So as we look at the polka dot chart later today, I just want you guys to keep in mind what the actual use case, along with governance and many other things, is involved with polka dot. So we're also going to be looking at Theta today. Theta is backed by Google, Samsung, Sony, and Binance as popular analysts. And I've always been personally skeptical about Theta. I haven't put any money behind the project. And I'm always skeptical of any company that attempts to enter the live streaming or video streaming realm. It is a large mountain of competition to climb. If you guys remember Mixer, Mixer was a Microsoft backed company that tried to get into live streaming. And you would think a company like Microsoft, which owns Xbox, as well as is a massive beast in the, in the tech world, would dominate something like live streaming, but they did not. And not only that, they had to shut down. There are a few elements to Theta that do have my attention, though. Esports crypto streaming service turns bandwidth into profits. And if you come down here, a heavy viewer can get 5 to $10 a month. Uh, it's significant in developing countries. Developing countries are more likely to adopt projects like these. If you think about the success Axie Infinity had in the Philippines, Axie Infinity player buys two houses in the Philippines from in-game profits, as well as the fact that Co-founders of YouTube and Twitch are among the company's advisors. Those are things that do interest me about the potential with Theta, and we will be diving into Theta's chart later in the video. VeChain, there is no shortage of news about VeChain on the daily. VeChain is a blockchain platform designed to enhance supply chain management and business processes. VeChain also has very strong ties to China. I believe they also have deals with uh, Walmart China. But most recently, San Marino approves blockchain COVID certificates on VeChain. So but using NFT tokens, they're tracking um, COVID uh, vaccination passports with VeChain, I believe. And that that's very huge. Uh, it's a small country that adopts it here. But what this means for the future of VeChain, as well as the endless headlines I could go through, is something that um, is not worth ignoring. So taking a look at Bitcoin's chart to start things off. It's interesting if you take a look at the daily here. Let's see if we can zoom in on the RSI. It bounced just as we expected. So it looks like it's just going to keep bouncing up and down in here. And as far as price goes, you can see these long wicks earlier in the last, uh, I don't know, four days ago pushing down. And now we have these long wicks pushing up. So it looks like it's going to be stuck more and more in this range, kind of between 33, 34 for the next day or so. We are seeing the stochastic RSI. It's kind of high. It's dropping down. But if we go to the four hour, um, stochastic RSI is low and it's pushing up. But then if we come to the one hour, stochastic RSI is high and it's pushing down. So those indicators usually tell me that it's going to be um, pretty boring for the for at least today. Today, there shouldn't be much going on. It probably will just hang out between the 33, 34. But overall, this is still not a bullish looking move, guys. I mean, you have to think about it like a bouncing ball, right? When a, when a crypto crashes, it goes down, goes down to 30, bounces up. And as you can see, this bouncing ball is continuously losing steam. And this, this wick down to 28 that I keep saying is not something anybody should ignore. We're not getting too much of a bounce back up and it's starting to kind of meander its way down in price. And taking a look at the Ichimoku cloud for Bitcoin, let's just turn my notes back on from yesterday. There we go. So as we expected, this, this kind of resistance did come from the conversion line. It's barely even getting up to the baseline. If it gets above 35, it can make a push for this uh, cloud, but that's most likely not going to happen. My targets are still looking pretty low here. There are these wicks that is kind of positive, but if we look at the four hour on Bitcoin here, what we can see is that we are below the Kumo cloud, that the baseline is above the conversion line and that the lagging span is behind. This is all a very bearish setup, guys. I mean, looking at the basic chart as well as this chart, these are there, it's not much resistance to get back up. However, it does need to cross above these lines, which are made up from moving averages. But it's it's just looks looks like it's still headed back down. So I would assume, with what we saw in the basic chart, if we go back over here, in terms of the stochastic RSI, it should be another slow day. But if you come to the daily. You can see here the stochastic RSI is starting to drop. I might si find some support here and we might get a lot more sideways action in here until this RSI reaches this breaking point that we've talked about. But overall, this, this is still looking rough. This is still looking like it's headed down. 
So as far as price action and price targets, my price target still remains around 30. And if you come over here to the Ichimoku cloud, you guys can see that too. The price action target is around 30. Now, if it does somehow manage to get back above 34 and push towards 35, that could turn around. But looking at the basic chart, that just does not look like it's going to be the case at the moment. So we're, we're still targeting around 30 K. Um, I mean, I would imagine 31 K would catch it, but if we start to test these lower supports, if you take a zoom out, let me just turn everything off. So you guys can really look at this. Oh, sorry about that. You can kind of see it. it's just starting to meander its way down. So price targets for now are around 30 K, but I also wanted to show you guys the weekly. So looking at the weekly chart, I'm just going to turn all of these labels off for a moment so it's more clear to see. The conversion line has crossed below the baseline and it looks like the lagging span wants to cross through. Now, if you guys go back to the daily, you know that the Kumo cloud is not something to mess with. You respect the cloud. If it goes through and it's a thin cloud, there's not a lot of support as well as when the lagging span crosses beneath the um, baseline and the conversion line cross bearish. These are not things to just ignore. So as we kind of come here, I'm going to turn all the price targets back on so we can have a closer look at where things might end up. So we come down here to the very bottom of this. This is around 27.9. So just around 28 K there will be some levels of support, but by late July, we are going to come in contact with this cloud. And if we fall beneath, that could be, this is around 25,000 here, right? Let me get the right price label out price note. So this is around 25,000 if it falls through. Um, there's also some support that could pop up around here around 27.9, but this is really around 28 K to play it safe. But this is something to keep in mind because this, this is coming up and this is starting to turn a little bit bearish looking. And, um, it's just important to take the right precautions and look for the right price points where things may bounce. So on the low end of a dip coming up, we could see something around 28,000 again, and it might spring up from there. So if it comes down to 28,000, it might be a good bottom target for the time being. But as the weeks go on, there is still the risk of running into the Kumo cloud. So for the time being, I would say the bottom of this dip might be around 28K. My price target for now though is still 30,000. Taking a quick look at Ethereum now, Ethereum's moving pretty much how we assumed. Uh, we're gonna jump straight to the Ichimoku cloud actually, because this is gonna give us a bit of a clearer picture. Uh, I actually tweeted these price targets yesterday. If you guys aren't following me on Twitter, by the way, Kevin Crates underscore, I'm very active on there throughout the day. Um, it did find support right around the bottom of this cloud, which is around 2045. However, it's running into resistance around this price target, which is around 2140-ish. Um, in terms of price action for um, Ethereum, you guys can see that it's inside of the cloud. And generally when something is inside of the cloud, you do not want to be trading it. The setup is also looking bearish. You guys can see on the four hour, the baseline is above the conversion line. The lagging span is beneath and we are inside of the cloud running into resistance. These are all bearish indicators. Uh, price targets for Ethereum are pretty much the same as they've been for days now, 1985. A little bit below 2000 would be my first price target. But if that is lost, a drop to 1700 is possible. And depending on what happens with Bitcoin in the coming days is really where this all depends. Looking at the basic chart, it's the same story. My first price target is still around the 200 EMA, which would be just a little bit underneath 2000. However, if those price targets of just 2000, 1950, 1980 are lost, 1700 is the most likely target where it will land. But that all depends on how Bitcoin moves. Um, it's stochastic RSI is high on the daily, but on the four hour, yep, it is low. So just like Bitcoin, it's going to be another boring day or so with Ethereum. But my price targets for Ethereum are still low. If it manages to get above this resistance of 2400 and move to for 2500, that would be bullish but price targets for Ethereum are still around 1950. And if the just under 2000 support is lost, uh, a drop to 1700 is possible. Looking at Polkadot now, Polkadot is a rough looking chart. Let's just draw some support lines here. Um, as far as this crash has gone, Polkadot has probably taken it, I wouldn't say the worst, but you see with other tokens, there is like Matic, Kusama, Solana. When, when the big crash happens, they tend to swing back up intensely. Polkadot on almost every crash that has ever happened 
Um, even when things were more bullish, it just tends to recover very slowly. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just in terms of would it be my first pick to buy on a crash? Uh, no. But would it be a project that I'm absolutely interested in and would like to pick up more for a long term hold? Because Polkadot, I'm, I'm holding quite a bit and Polkadot for me is a long term hold. It's not something I think about too much. But in terms of price action, it's not my first pick off of a crash because you still have time after the crash to kind of buy it at those low prices. But my target prices for Polkadot are actually pretty low. I think if there is another market crash, considering it's barely recovered, I mean, we won't even really touch on these high targets if it somehow manages to get back above $20, obviously that would be bullish. But my price targets for Polkadot are going to be close to $10. I mean, if there is a large enough market crash and Polkadot heads down towards this range here, I think that's a great buy for Polkadot. If you get lucky or, you know, if, if, if anything goes below $10, kind of this range here, I would say, Somewhere between seven to ten dollars for polka dot is a great entry. And looking at the Ichimoku cloud for polka dot, you see the same kind of things that I'm already describing. We're pr it's pretty far off from reaching the cloud, not to mention the cloud is very thick. The baseline is above the conversion line and the lagging span is hanging well down here. Um, it's a very bearish setup for polka dot. Um, it's, it's surprising to me that the price has gone this way, but as as its parachain slot auctions start to increase and some more of these projects on Polkadot really start to come into their own, Polkadot will, in my opinion, be a very dominant player in the game, which it already is. It's just on these crashes, it's having very slow recoveries. So as far as price targets for Polkadot go, it would run into resistance around 19 if it manages to get up there somehow. However, my price targets for Polkadot are going to be in this range down here, somewhere between 10 to seven dollars 6.8 somewhere in here off of the big crash for polka dot would be a very decent entry and i would look to start adding more to my polka dot holdings down between somewhere seven to ten dollars taking a look at theta now theta has had a great year and a rough year all at the same time right i mean theta at the start was less than a dollar fifty theta at the height of its trading was pushing around sixteen dollars and on May 19th, it drops down to $3.50. I mean, Theta's chart is something to remind you all to always take profits. Don't get greedy in this game because volatility happens. And as far as price targets go, you know, it's, it's hard to leave money on the table, I know, but it's just a matter of kind of going through this process. And eventually you kind of just learn that if you make money, you should be grateful that you doubled your money or tripled your money. And, you know, there has to be some people for sure that were just holding. And this must have been a very rough drop. But as far as price targets go, so Theta is in an interesting space here. Let's take a look. Let's just set up the RSI around 50 here. So Theta is obviously in a downtrend like everything is in the market. Um, as, but I want to take a look at the Ichimoku cloud because that is one of the reasons I want to look at Theta because the chart looks interesting. This is Theta on the daily as far as the cloud goes. I mean, yes, it's a little far away from the cloud. The baseline is above the conversion line and the lagging span is down below and that is expected, right? We are not in the most bullish state of the market. So it would run into resistance around $7, which is the the baseline as well as the cloud. But the thing to keep in mind here is how thin this cloud is. Similar to Solana. Um, if, you know, Theta has a few times throughout the year when Bitcoin was crashing, done its own thing and kept pushing up in price. So if there is a scenario, even as this th cloud continues to thin out down here, where Theta can push up in price to this kind of range over here to towards seven dollars, it could break above. And if, if it breaks above, that's around, what is this a price target of? Eight eight point seven, but our current price targets for Theta are going to be a little bit lower still. So, in the event of a crash for Theta, we're going to be looking down here. So, Theta around five dollars, four dollars would be a pretty great entry potentially. Let's take a look at the four hour chart and see where we are at. So it is it is kind of poking in and out of the cloud here, but it's kind of riding the support for the time being. I would imagine if there is another crash, it did kind of wick down to here in early June, but I would look, I would look for something in this range. 
what is this price here that it wicked down to? I would look for something in this range between, yeah, four four point five to five dollars. So anything towards the five dollar range, I think, is a decent entry for theta. Let's take a look at the other chart real quick. Uh, the stochastic RSI is low on the daily down here. Let me get that pen tool. It's low down here, but if we look at the four hour, it's low as well. So theta theta has potential to start pushing up in price. I would look for resistance though kind of around here, I believe. So it's gonna run into resistance around 6.8, probably work its way back down. If it manages to get above, what is 6.7, 6.8, that could be interesting. If we kind of just put one more little target right here. So if it manages to get above 6.8 and start to push, you know, kind of into this range of 7.3, 7.5, it could get bullish. However, theta is still, in my opinion, like the rest of the market, I'd be looking for price targets kind of down here more likely. See these wicks right down here is the price targets. Yeah, so I'd be looking more for price targets towards this range here. However, 5.3 to anything under $5 to $4 on theta would, would have my interest. But looking at the Ichimoku cloud, on the daily, this is the thing that has my interest the most is how thin that cloud is and how little resistance ahead it has. The stochastic RSI is also low and theta has been known to do its own thing. So I will be keeping a close eye on these price targets for theta and just keeping a close eye on theta in general. VeChain, VeChain has had an amazing year. Don't, don't get it twisted by looking at this chart. VeChain at its height was trading around, let's take a look here, around 30 cents almost, right? And we're in July, 2021. If you go back to July, 2020, look at this. This is July, 2020, let's go to the start of the month. July 2nd, 2020, VeChain was just above a penny. If you go back to June of 2020, VeChain was half a cent. And to go from that in a year to 30 cents is no joke and nothing to ignore. As far as price has gone, I'm surprised this level of a dip did not happen earlier. I remember following VeChain when it was just a few cents and VeChain has always had a very amazing looking chart. As soon as things got kind of parabolic here, things got a little crazy. Um, but as far as price targets go for VeChain, if price manages to push back towards 10 cents, things could get kind of bullish early. but. Again, with the state of the market, let's kind of look at the RSI as well here. Let's just put it at roughly 50, just pull that down a bit. So VeChain, obviously, like the rest of the market, is in downtrend territory. Off the initial crash, it did have quite the bounce. It bounced about May 19th, bounced about around 200%, but since then has started to fizzle out. Its last bounce was only around 50%. So. As, as the market heads into more of a question mark territory, you're gonna see this with projects like VeChain that were less than a penny a year ago. So they are considered high risk, right? And with Amazon also coming out with a similar kind of product, uh, VeChain is still a small business. I know the news around VeChain is very exciting, but you have to understand that all of that news is already factored into the price. What VeChain does as a small business in the coming year and the coming months will determine the long-term price of VeChain. So as far as price targets for VeChain that I'm gonna be looking at are going to be, as usual, lower. I mean, look, if it manages to push back towards 10 cents, I'll, I'll change my story. I'm already holding a lot of VeChain. I've been following them since they were like two, three cents. But these price targets got pretty crazy and uh, this pullback was expected. Again, all of these charts are just reminders to always take profits, guys, especially when things go from a penny to 30 cents, just take a bit of profits. I know it's hard to leave money on the table, but I will repeat what everybody always repeats is to just take a bit of profits. So these are the basic chart price targets. Let's also look at the Ichimoku cloud for V chain and see what's going on. So the resistance for V chain is not that bad compared to things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the chart setup, like all of them, still looks rough. The baseline is above the conversion line. The lagging span is down here. That it is a bearish setup. So we're going to be looking mostly at lower price targets around five cents. V chain is trading around seven cents right now. I mean, if it manages to get back above, it's going to run into resistance 
right around here anyways. I mean, it's gonna run, run into resistance on the conversion line around eight cents first. All right, so that's gonna be a bit of resistance. And then if it manages to get above there, it's also gonna run into resistance here around eight, seven. And if it manages to somehow get to the cloud around 10 cents, which is the same as the other chart, it's going to run into resistance. So if it manages to push into the cloud around 11 cents, that's where you could look to go long if it starts to push up, but then it's also gonna run into resistance on the higher end. I mean, this will all be kind of later on, but around 14 cents. This cloud is thinning out. Um, v chain, like I said, it's got a bright future potentially, but price targets for now, I'm gonna be looking lower. This is around six cents. And then if we go a little lower than that, I mean, the lowest wick here off the May 19th crash, well, that's not the right price target. There we go, um, was around five cents. So I'd be looking for something closer to that. Maybe this would support around here is three cents. So it all depends on what happens with the markets. If more regulations come in and more, more concern and fear comes into the market, you could see these lower price targets hit for sure because VeChain is a small company and it is a high risk um, company to invest in because of how because of how cheap these prices were a year ago. That doesn't mean, I mean, even VeChain at three cents compared to what it was a year ago is still a massive jump in price. VeChain, you know, three cents is not bearish for VeChain. It's just not as bullish as 30 cents. But my price targets for VeChain are gonna be closer to somewhere between three to six cents. Let's see if we go back to the, let's go to the four hour chart real quick and just take a quick look at what's going on. So it's fallen through the cloud and most likely headed towards I mean, yeah, I mean, if Bitcoin goes to 30 cents, I would look for this price target first around five cents, which is the same as the wick. You can kind of see here, it's kind of fallen through the cloud, not much support underneath it. And the next price targets could be around six cents as well. This could, this could get hit, but somewhere between six to five cents is where I'd be looking for V chain for now. But that, that doesn't necessarily mean I would look to add there. I'd have to see how it bounces. And my price targets may be lower between three to five cents for VeChain. I mean, ideally, I could see it ending up around here, but somewhere within this range for sure. Three, three to five cents, I would say, would be my price targets for VeChain in the, in a crash. But for now, let's just let's just say, yeah, somewhere somewhere in this range, three to five cents would be price targets for VeChain in the short term. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. Remember to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave a comment down below of any charts you guys want me to look at. If you guys are new here, any interaction with the channel does help this channel grow. So leaving a like, hitting the subscribe, leaving a comment, these things do help the channel grow, which helps me free up more time to do this. And I enjoy doing this because I like talking about crypto. Uh, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, Kevin Crates underscore on Twitter. I'm extremely active on there. I post charts all day and I always respond if you tweet at me. Um, I appreciate you guys. I'm out.